Chapter 10, Busted Link. Link wasn't on the bus the next morning. His dad drove him to school with a project. Right after math in the morning, Mrs. Brottle said, Now, we're going to look at the Thanksgiving projects. First, you should show what you made and then tell why it's part of the first Thanksgiving story. Andrea and Laura went first. They had made a poster to show the inside of the Mayflower. It looked like their parents had done most of the drawing and they both talked too soft and giggled a lot. Then Ben and Carlos showed Plymouth Rock. It was where the pilgrims had landed. The rock was made of paper mache, except they didn't use enough paint. You could still see the comics and the headlines on the strips of newspaper, but it was an okay report. And then Mrs. Brottle said, Jake, Link, you're going to tell us something about the Native Americans? I said, our project is out in the hall under the Kowa truck. Link followed me out into the hall. There was a white plastic bag covering the project. The sand and rocks made the box lid heavy. I picked up one end and Link got the other end. We started toward the door. Then Link stopped. His face looked pale and his lips looked blue. In a small voice, he said, I can't do this. Reports. You know, talking to the whole class. He gulped, and then very softly he said, I can't. We were face to face, about two feet apart. I was looking up at him. No super bully in sight, just a scared kid. And then I knew why Link had kept telling me that I had to give the report. Then I felt this rush of power. At last, the great and fearsome Link completely at my mercy. At last, it was my turn to be the bulliest super bully of all. I could have said, Oh, look, it's Whittle Winky afraid of a report. I could have said, So, you make me feel terrible for a whole month, and now you want me to feel sorry for you? Well, too bad, tough guy. Or I could have said, Hurry, let's get in the room so the whole class can see mighty Link Baxter throw up all over the floor. <laughs> but I didn't. I said, it will be okay. Really, all you have to do is stand there and point at stuff when I talk about it. This is a great model. Everyone's going to think it's the best. Link swallowed hard and took a deep breath. Okay, but you're gonna do the report, right? I nodded and we carried the project into the room and up to the table by the chalkboard. I looked at a card I had made and said, we made something to show how the Native Americans lived before the pilgrims came. And Link pulled the bag off the model. Some kids in the back stood up so they could see it better. And Mrs. Brattle said, everyone should come up closer so you can see. This is really special. Careful, don't bump the table. The kids were blown away, and so was I. Because after I left his house the day before, Link made some more stuff. He made little bows and arrows. He made some spears and some little baskets. And the baskets had little yellow beads in them, yellow like the color of corn. So I said, this is what part of a village looked like. The wigwams and long houses were made of poles covered with tree bark. I kept talking and Link pointed at things. He didn't look like he was going to be sick anymore. When I was done telling about everything, I said, and I have to tell the truth, this whole thing, Link made it and planned it and he did all the painting too. I helped a little, but really, Link made it. And the kids all clapped, and so did Mrs. Brattle. <laughs> Link's face got red, but he smiled, and it wasn't a bully smile. It was his real smile. On the bus home that afternoon, Link sat next to me, but it was different. He didn't poke me or grab my book bag. He just sat there like a kid. He joked around with some fourth graders. 
When we got off at our stop, I turned toward my house and he turned toward his. But before I turned the corner, he called out, Hey! I cringed. I couldn't help it. It sounded like Link's bully voice. He trotted over, no bully face. He said, What you did at school today? Thanks. Then he looked all embarrassed. He shrugged and said, See you later, Jake. And I said, Yeah, see ya. Then it hit me. Link didn't call me flake or fake. He called me Jake. So now I'm in fourth grade and Link still lives around the corner from me. He's even bigger now. I think he might start shaving soon. It's not like we became best friends or anything. He still pretty much thinks I'm a drip. And I still pretty much think he's a moron. We never worked on another project together. And it's not like Link stopped being a bully, but he did stop being a super bully. And he never bullied me again, ever. I'm still kind of small for my age. It's still the perfect size for bullying. And I still look kind of smart and I haven't turned into a tattletale. But if a kid starts to bully me now, it never lasts. I know too much. Bullies don't fool me anymore. Because back behind those mean eyes and that bully face, there's another face, a real face. And if I keep looking for that real face, I see it. And the bully sees me see it. And BAM! Just like that, another bully gets busted. By me, Jake Drake, Bully Bastard.